You're listening to the Dear Baseball Gods podcast. In this show, I help parents, players, and coaches better navigate their baseball careers. Welcome back to Dear Baseball Gods. I'm Dan Blewett. On today's episode, we're going to cover one topic, and I also have an announcement about the future of the podcast for the time being. So we'll start with the announcement. Uh, this is going to be my last uh, episode for a while. Now, this is, this is not going to be the end of the podcast. Uh, Dear Baseball Gods will continue. I enjoy doing it, and I enjoy the shorter format that I've switched to over the last, uh, I suppose it's like 25, 30 episodes now. Um, But I'm going to take a little sabbatical, and all that really means is that uh, there's going to be a couple month gap, and however, there may be episodes, or there may be times where I just post an episode in three weeks, or in a couple weeks, or they're just going to be at erratic uh, intervals until I get back to full strength. So if you're a regular listener to the show, I appreciate you. Um, And I am sensitive to trying to give people the content that they want that helps them uh, that they consistently uh, tune in for. That being said, uh, in this new year, and I'm not big on New Year's resolutions, uh, but I am on continuing to reassess what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And I've decided that for uh, the coming year, and this is really not a New Year thing, it just happens to be at the end of this, you know, holiday cycle, uh, I really need to double down on YouTube content, and I also need to double down on finishing one of the three books that really uh, can get pushed to the finish line if I sit down and and sort of hammer them home. So I decided that I'm going to drop this podcast for the moment and my softball podcast for the moment. And if the mood strikes me, jump back on the mic and release an episode whenever I feel like it, but not be regular again for a little while. So um, if you want to be alerted, when the next podcast goes live, because I might just get, you know, get the whim to do it in three weeks or in a month or in a week. I don't know, uh, cause they're not terribly difficult to produce. Um, but the planning and, and some other aspects of it is where it sort of starts to add up. So if you want to be updated, the best way to do so is number one, to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, uh, that way, or if you're listening here or on YouTube, that way, if uh, I do release a new episode, you'll be notified. The other way is to join my email list, which there's links in the show notes, and I do blast out an email to my list, which as of right now is at about 4,400 people, and uh, that will alert you anytime there's something new. So when the show is about to get ready to go back to regular uh, you know, weekly episodes, you'll be notified. So if you're not on my email list, definitely keep up with it. I don't spam people. I send out a, a pretty short, pretty to the point uh, email every time I have a new video or new podcast, um, and anytime I do have course sales, uh, which one's actually coming up, I do blast those out as well. But my email list is uh, is pretty effective. It's pretty short. It's pretty, uh, I think, respectful of your time. And it's basically just saying, hey, we got something new, check it out or don't. So that's my announcement. So this will be the last one for a little while, but I, like I said, I appreciate you listening and sharing the show and it will be back. So. Today's episode, I I just want to talk about one thing, which is the odds of making it. And there's two sides of this coin. The one side is I think most parents understand, or at least uh, sensible parents understand, that the odds that you gave birth to a Major League Baseball player, especially a name brand Major League Baseball player who sticks around in the show for, you know, 10 years, is just like astronomically small, right? I think everyone understands that to a degree. And players have to understand that to a degree as well. And so it's always great uh, for players to, you know, be well-rounded, um, see the merit in their academics and focus on, you know, having uh, career aspirations beyond baseball. That's Those are good things, right? On the other hand, you don't want to take those as a parent or as a player and get the wrong idea that you are a long shot for some reason. So... For all of us, we understand that any, whether it's, you know, building the next unicorn business um, or, you know, being a a pro athlete or whatever it is, any of these, these difficult, not completely within your control, you know, require some luck and some innate talent and right place at the right time kind of stuff. 
sure, the odds are long that you will be selected for that thing, essentially. But the thing to remember is, and, and one of my teammates and I, we've talked about this a bunch, is, is that when you're in your peer group and you're, say you're a, a good 14U baseball player or a good 12U baseball player or a good, you know, Division II baseball player, uh, when you're in that peer group and you're excelling and you're doing well, you have to make sure and, and remind yourself and look left and look right that if you're there, you don't have this one in a million chance. If you're there and you're in the proper peer group, you know, you're a good 14U baseball player, then your chance is still as good as anyone else's. And this is where people sometimes lead themselves astray saying, oh, you know, yeah, I put in a lot of work and I'm doing this, but, you know, the odds of me making it are, are you know, infinitesimally small. Well, they're also infinitesimally small compared to everyone else. And you really can't look at the odds that way. And the it's, it's, it's not really the best statistical way of looking at this because, you know, you could say, well, in a small town, like what's, what are the odds of some player making it from some tiny little town? Well, sometimes there's two major leaguers come from the same small town. You say, well, what are the odds of that? Well, you know, sometimes it just comes down to, they have enough talent, they have enough coaching and they have enough belief in self where they say, you know what, why not me? And if the next guy, um, has the same level of ability and we're all in the running still, then here we are. So obviously the higher up in the ladder you get, the more those odds no longer apply. And this is where, again, you have to remind yourself that the odds are counting all baseball players that, you know, started at eight U or whatever, and they're youth players. When we start to pool together all the players who were, you know, at one point trying to be a major leaguer, you know, I assume that if you started playing baseball at some age, you wouldn't turn down the opportunity to be a major leaguer if it was given to you. Right. So they say, yeah, the odds of, you know, with all the baseball players ever play, how many of them made it to the major leagues for even a, a second, even for one at bat, right? But as those players start to dwindle out, the odds quickly become not one in a million. And really, if you're a talented player at, at 8U, the odds are never one in a million for you. They're instantly one in 100,000 or something, or one in you know 85,000 or whatever it is, because it's counting all these players who were just terrible from the get-go, who were never going to go anywhere. And so really... If you start to extract it out, you're already, if you're a serious player and you actually work hard and you actually have some talent, you're more like one in 50,000 maybe, or one in 42,000, whatever. And I'm just making these numbers up, but it's important for players to realize that as they start to climb the ladder, like if you're a SEC baseball player, what are the odds that you become a major leaguer now? Maybe it's like one in 217, right? Maybe it's one in 85. It's hard to know at that point. And even as a minor leaguer, yeah, it's like one out of, I think, 50 gets to, uh, or maybe one out of 20, if you ever play uh, in the minor leagues, that you'll get a chance to make it in the major leagues. And only 50% of first round draft picks make it to the majors. But, you know, you start to see that, you know, of that 50 or of that first round draft pick peer group, you know, 50% of them make it to the major league. So it's one in two, right? And then if you start to take out players who had major injuries, so if, if 100 first round draft picks exists and 50 of them on average will make to the major leagues, well, how many of them who had major injuries, if we take out the major injuries, how many does that leave? So say that's like 20 out of 100. Now it's um, 30 out of 80 or 50 out of 80 and your odds are continuing to increase, right? 50 out of 80 is uh, 62 and a half percent. So you know, your odds continue to improve as you start to dwindle down and look at your different stats. So you say, all right, if I'm a first round draft pick and I'm, I'm healthy, then my odds continue to, to go up. Right. So it's important as a parent to understand that the odds are long and that you shouldn't be this psychotic mess, um, pushing your child to, you know, hopefully be this, this miracle, um, you know, major leaguer. But at the same time, you also don't want to discount the fact that if your son is good and he's putting in the work and he's running with the high level peer group, you know, whether that's varsity baseball players, whether that's, you know, division one baseball players or high level Juco players, if they're in that peer group, then they still have the same chance that any kid next to them has. And it's imperative for them to have any chance at all at making it of having that attitude. If they don't say, 
yeah, when I look left and I look right, these are the guys that I need to beat out. I mean, one of my, my friends, as we were talking about this, he said he had a teammate in double A, which double A is only two steps from the major leagues. And of course, for a lot of players, double A is one step from the major leagues because a lot of players are, are young and really talented in double A. Whereas in triple A, which is technically a higher level in the minor leagues, there's a lot more older players that have bounced up and bounced back down. But double A is like the first stop at the, it's like the highest first stop. Whereas you know, when I mean, what I mean by that is you go to double A before you go to triple A. And so that's the, the first stop at the very top level of the minors where you're going to see a lot of really talented 21, 22, 23 year olds, and they'll just leapfrog right to the major leagues from there. So anyway, he had a teammate who was in double A and who was saying just one day just sitting around the clubhouse and he's like, oh man, it's like, it was a long shot for any of us to make it to the big leagues anyway. And he was just like, what are you talking about? Like, we're here, we're in double A, like we're close. I don't have to beat a million people out. I only have to beat out three of you. I only have to beat out five of you. Like I'm in the starting rotation here in double A. I'm one of five starters on this team. That makes me one of 10 starting pitchers in the top two levels of the minors. Um, I don't have to be a one. I'm not one in a million. I'm one in 10. Like I have a chance. I have a very legitimate chance. And some people fail to see that even as they get really high up that, and it's not even as much a, a roll of the dice anymore at that point, right? It's more like, Hey, how much can we control and how many variables can we, can we eliminate to increase my odds even more? Right. Because players who are say, you know, chronically underperforming, chronically hurt, uh, you know, having bad habits on the road, whatever it is, the more things you can control, the better your odds go up. Cause you know, say double A starting pitchers who have a drinking problem only make it to the major leagues at a 7% rate, whereas major league pitchers who are double A pitchers who have excellent, you know, they get excellent sleep every night. They have excellent nutritional habits. They put in a little extra work conditioning. Maybe they make it to the major leagues at a 14% clip. So there's all these different factors that are essentially influencing your percent chance of being anything that you want. And so people get wrapped up in odds and trying to figure out, you know, what, what it is that they are capable of. And it's a, it's a really misleading thing. And when you wake up and you have one more day in, in, in college baseball, one more day in pro ball, you still have a chance. And it's important again, not to just get wrapped up in this idea that everything you do from start to finish is a one, is a, a one in a million shot. So if your kid is really passionate about baseball and really wants to be a major leaguer one day, well, he can, if he believes in himself and he gets the lucky breaks and he does things the way, you know, he needs to do them. And he sort of slithers through the system in the right, right way. Right. There's a, a lot of factors that are beyond players control. There's injuries, there's, you know, sort of timing out, aging out. So, Maybe you don't bloom until a, bit, you know, a little later. And then unfortunately you kind of miss your chance. Uh, that kind of happened to me. That's happened to lots of players. Like you have to be not only good, but you have to be good young. You have to be good at the right times. You have to have your, everything come together at the right moment when the team needs someone like you at the next highest level to promote you. So there's lots and lots of factors that, that don't make it exactly, you know, this linear thing, like in the, maybe in the corporate world. And that's probably not a great example either because a lot of the same uh, limitations are there, but you know, you talk about, you know, salmon trying to, trying to run up, a up, up a stream to spawn, you know, there's a lot of factors and, and many of these fish are probably equally qualified, right. To make it up there. They're equally strong swimmers. They're very similar in size and obviously like they're the same darn breed of fish. So why does one make it up and one doesn't, it's hard to really know. It's just kind of which path they pick and how the water flows. And is there a bear to snatch them out or whatever it is. But you know, the point is, um, when you're trying to do these long shot things, number one, I think as a parent, it's important to remember that, yeah, your kids should plan for the future and they should be well-rounded. They shouldn't burn all their bridges and, and do stupid stuff that costs them years on the way out. But they're also only gonna have one shot to do this stuff. So they're not going to get a chance to be young again. They're not going to get a chance to sign a, a, another contract. Sometimes it's one and done. And sometimes it's, it's extremely fleeting when the opportunities do present themselves. 
one of my mentors as a kid, a guy I worked for, he owned a batting cage. Um, he was a, one of my, he was my first boss and a great baseball guy. He helped me get to my, um, he made the call that got my college coach to come watch me. And of course he gave me a shot as well. Um, he, after he graduated from college, he finished his fourth year at my alma mater, UMBC. And this guy, Dwayne, he, uh, he didn't get drafted, but a lot of scouts were calling him after the draft and said, Hey, you know, we're going to come look at you. We obviously we've been following through you through the season. We know you didn't get drafted and we didn't draft you, but we're thinking we might sign you. So they go out to watch him, uh, an adult men's league game a couple of days after the draft, he hits two home runs, plays a great game. And he, uh, he, the scout there watched him says, all right, yep, man, awesome game. Like we're going to sign you, like follow me over to my car. And I think uh, the story goes that by the time they walked to his car, because I think he came to the ballpark knowing that they had like one or two spots left for an infielder. Um, by the time he got to his car, they had signed two Dominican players and he couldn't sign him. And that was it. So, you know, these doors open, they close and uh, they can be very fleeting and you just never really know, but it's, it's great to give it that shot to, to give your parent to give your kids a, a safety net. Like my parents paid for my college. That was a huge safety net for me where I could go pursue making $600 a month playing independent baseball and chasing that dream, which would have otherwise been impossible. Um, you know, had that financial burden not been taken off of me by my parents. So that was a, a huge gift to help me keep going. And, uh, you know, if you want to give your kid, you know, every opportunity to try to see what door might be ajar that he can slip through and continue to keep his baseball dreams going. And there's lots of different stuff like that. And sometimes it's financial. Sometimes it's just continuing to encourage them and give them resources and a place to train and, and, you know, stuff like that. So, it's hard. It's hard on families. It's a long journey for everybody, no matter how it turns out. And the odds are long. And everyone should understand that, you know, doing these unique long shot kind of things are really rewarding. They're really challenging. Uh, they can be really demoralizing at times, but they're often worth it. And they're often time sensitive. So you give it a shot when you're young, you know, and then you, uh, you see what you're made of. But I just found it was an interesting conversation between my friend and I, and I wanted to kind of share a little bit about it here. Uh, because you know, those odds, it, it really is, it's one of those things that players that really stick it out and really scratch and claw to try to get to the top. They all have that same attitude, which is, I don't care what the odds are. My odds are the same as the next guy next to me. My odds are the same as anybody else. And if anyone can make it, why can't it be me? And even as a, as a failed, you know, um, a center, is that the word summiter, the failed, so fail, I was a failed summiter. I didn't make it to the majors. Um, even as a failed summiter, I still had that same mentality and it was important that I never thought I can't. It was just like, why can't I? I like I have the same shot as anyone else. I just got to be better than this guy and be better than that guy. And you know, it'll all take care of itself and really just be the best version of myself. And if I think the best ber- version of myself can be capable of doing that job, which I knew I could, then you know, let's keep going and give it a shot. So thank you for listening. Like I said, the, the podcast will be back at some point regularly. I'll probably have an intermittent episode here and there, um, as I see fit. But, you know, I think this is for, uh, for me, this is right now, the, the, the greater good as I figure out what I can devote time to. And I don't have a massive content team, nor, uh, would that really work that well? I think for me, if other people were, putting too much of their thumbprint into to my work. So I have a book in the works. Well, I have a couple books in the works and I'm going to, like I said, uh, get those uh, over the goal line, hopefully soon. Uh, I have a new newsletter I'm going to be starting and uh, some cool projects. So this is going to go by the wayside for a little bit, but it'll be back. So thanks for listening to Dear Baseball Gods. I appreciate you. And in the meantime, definitely subscribe to YouTube, sign up for my newsletter list. That will keep you up to date with all my new stuff. And again, thanks, and I'll catch you next time. That's it for today's episode of Dear Baseball Gods. I'd greatly appreciate it if you'd subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Don't forget, in the notes of this show, you'll find links to my pitching manual, Pitching Isn't Complicated, my memoir, Dear Baseball Gods, 
my online video pitching courses, and my new baseball strength training program called Early Work. You can sign up right now for a free 14-day trial to Early Work, and if you're interested in one of my online courses, you can save 20% on any one of them using the promo code BASEBALLGODS. Thanks again for listening, and stay on your hustle. You never know who's watching. <laughs>